welcome back to At Home with Kathy. I'm Kathy and you're in my house and you're joining me for the fourth episode in our series on chalk painting our way through my house. We are doing six different themes with all 36 colors, the four waxes, but today we're going back to the kitchen. Now I gave you a little spoiler alert last week that I had changed the color we had decided to do on the cabinet doors and here's my rationale why. We had chosen a soft green, the Versailles. We painted the door after showing you how to prep it and get it ready for paint. But I hung the door up to make sure I liked it first. And I really do advise, that's a really good idea. You've got a lot of time and commitment when you're painting your kitchen. You don't want to be halfway through and go, wow, I really hate this. But what we did, we hung it up, we looked at it in daylight. We looked at it in uh, the artificial light. We looked at it on a cloudy day. And what happened was, the walls are a soft yellow in here. It's called Honey Infusion. And what the yellow in the Versailles paint made it too similar. So there was no real distinction between the cupboard doors and the wall. And I really did want that to be a little more distinct. So I played around with the palette. So we had all of these colors on the original palette. What I did was I reworked them. Duck Egg Blue became the color that showed up the nicest against the yellow, but also still complemented all the other colors that are in my hands full, the painted furniture recipes on the country kitchen. So it made it kind of easy. I just repainted the door, duck egg blue. All of these cupboards have now been painted. Two coats. My first coat, I watered down the paint just a little bit because this was melamine pulled off MDF. The MDF is a raw wood product, really. And so I, I thought it might absorb a lot of paint, so I watered down the paint just a little bit, maybe 2-3%. I worked from a small container, I watered it just a little bit, just to make it a little bit less solid, thick. And two coats on everything, let it dry, then went back and white waxed it. The white wax, and you can see it in the little grooves a little bit, but it gives it a really nice texture. I used the round bristle brush, which gives me some brush strokes, which I wanted. It, it um, hides some of the imperfections that are in the wood. And the white just gets caught a little tiny bit in between the brush strokes and in the, just in the detail of where the router is trimmed this cupboard. So we've done all of it. Now, the interesting thing to note here, this is melamine that's on the side of the cabinet. I painted it. Now, you don't always have a lot of success painting melamine, but this was old. It wasn't shiny. I gave it a very thin coat the first time, let it dry really well, went back and dried and painted it again, and it's waxed beautifully. None of it peeled off. I have a little, little trim work to touch up here. We're just painting the window trims now, but it really came out nicely. So. All of the doors have been done. We have a little adjusting to do as we put them back up, but it really came out well. We have white trim, so the next thing to look at and the next project in this kitchen is how to transform our beige tiles, our beige box splash. These are ceramic four inch tiles. Some of them have little patterns on them. How do we bring those back to life? because the beige is now really dull against these really newly, nicely painted cabinets. So Sean's gonna give you a close up here. This is pure white chalk paint. It took three coats to cover. There's quite a bit of texture on these tiles, which you don't really see until you start to paint them. So I paint it, I let it dry really well. It seems to take longer to dry the paint does on tiles than it does maybe on wood. I the next day went back, painted it again, and then the next day, so I allowed 24 hours between each application of paint. It's on there, it's solid now, it doesn't rub off. And what I'm gonna show you is just how quick and easy it is to paint this tile. It honestly, I think it takes longer to wash it. And you really do wanna give your backsplash a good wash. It's a hardworking part of your kitchen. It splashes from the sink, it splashes from the stove. So I used my scrubby when I went over this. I put a little of the Dawn dish detergent on here and directly got the scrubby wet, put the Dawn dish detergent on and scrubbed the whole thing and then went back over it 
twice with a dishcloth soaked in the, the dishwater with the Dawn detergent as well and let it dry thoroughly. That's really important because the grout may have picked up some moisture. It's I have no way of knowing because I didn't put this in. I don't know whether this grout is sealed. Uh, if, it, if it was sealed, it's lost some of it because it's discolored and it may have absorbed some water and I don't want that water coming through when I paint. So I let it dry really well, like a day, it, to dry extremely well. So we're just gonna go ahead and paint a small section and you're gonna see how fast it is. So I'm using the pure white paint and I'm using this straight out of the can, no watering down. Just dip it in. And the way I paint this, after taping it very well, because I don't want white paint all over my green, I follow the grout marks. I start by going up and down, following all the grout marks. If I don't do this, it's going to be really hard to work the paint in. So I kind of do the grid pattern, fill it all in. I don't have to paint a big section at a time. Probably going to paint about maybe four by four squares. And I fill in the little holes that are there that you can see sometimes the grout has just a little bit of a a hole in it where it was a little air bubble from when it was applied. So there's my verticals, so I'm going to do my horizontals, same thing. Now I'm able to pick up a little paint that was there from where I did the first, the verticals. So now from this point on, I don't want to leave it like that because that's a little too linear and it won't be very interesting when I when I look back at it later and I'll never be able to keep it perfect. So now I'm just going to go along and I'm going to fill it in using Annie's signature technique of cross brushing, carrying the paint, working it in where I see little holes. I'm not going to worry too much if I don't get them all in the first go because when I come back and do this the second time around I'll catch what I didn't see. Most important thing is to get a base coat on the whole thing. And because I'm going to have a line here where I stop and start, I'm going to make sure I feather out my ends a bit. That'll make it easier when I go back to paint the rest of the section. It won't be a solid rigid line, so I stopped in the middle of a tile deliberately for that reason. And when I start, I'll start here with my lines, go all along, and go all the way around until I've done all the beige with the first coat. I did. I did tape here. I didn't tape underneath here because it's white. So the white on white is never going to show for me. So I'm going to put the lid back on the can, wait until that's good and dry, and go back do my second coat, and I will have to do a third. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to show you what I decided to do to bring all of the colors that we have in our country palette. The kitchen's a real challenge to bring a whole lot of colors together without making it seem busy. There's a lot going on in the kitchen anyway. And um, especially if you like to cook and you have your utensils sitting and your coffee maker and all that sort of thing. So I came up with a way to add the color in little tiny amounts, just enough to make it interesting. So I'm going to show you that in just a sec. So we were trying to capture the colors that are in the country palette. And this is a French country palette, so it's a little bit different than we might expect. And also at the same time, tie in the colors that are in the dining room right next to the kitchen. So while Paris Gray may not be in the country palette, it's going to be in this palette for this kitchen because I'm using it in the, in the dining room and I wanted to tie it in. And I found when I did the white, as much as I like it and how clean and bright it is, it's a little boring and I needed to bring color into here. So I thought, oh, two for one. I made little stamp, little sponge stamps. I just took a regular sponge, picked one that had some nice texture, some nice holes, measured it into one inch squares. These are four inch tiles. I want a little bit of space between my sponge stamps. So a one inch square is going to give me, it's going to appear as though I grouted around each of these tiny little tiles, which I didn't. Just cut it up, put a little bit of paint on a paper plate. That gives me something to dab into. And I have a cloth here. I may need to dab a little bit of my paint off. I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted these to be, but I know I want them to be random. I don't want this to be a fixed pattern. So what I did was I 
I cut one of my little squares out, put a little bit of tape on it, kind of went around and said, yeah, that looks good. That looks good. And just did it so that they're, they're sort of random. So I'm going to go ahead right now and we're going to sponge these on. Now I have nine colors. I chose nine colors. It's just easier. I know I have to do each one once and my sponging is done. So I'm just going to dip it in. This is too much paint. If I put that on the wall, I'm just going to have a big gobby mess. I want it to have a little bit of texture. So I'm just going to try, make sure I have good coverage of my paint on my sponge that I have it. But again, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Press it firmly, lift it off. If you're not exactly excited by it, turn it around and press again. Put it down, pick the next color. And it pretty much goes along that easily. So we're going to do all nine colors here. And the first one I did was a Chateau Gray, which is a nice green. This is an Aubusson Blue. And I'm going to put this one in the middle so that I have it as a reference point. I don't want to be too far up on my... I'm going to just There we go. The next one is Provence. Beautiful blue. Nice one for us here in Nova Scotia. It seems to be a strong coastal. So I'm just checking the bottom of the sponge when I look at it to make sure that I have good coverage. But you can see all those little holes, so they're going to give me some nice texture here. I'm going to go along and do my next one. Press it in. Put it down. And I'll do a gray next to that. This one's my duck egg blue. So this is repeating what I have in my cabinets. firm pressure. This is my Paris Gray, which is the color I'm going to continue into the dining room. So it's kind of a nice way to segue from one to the other. And it's a gray. It's quite a bit like the duck egg when it is side by side. So I'm going to put it on the opposite of the tile. This is another soft color. This is country gray. No, oh, I'm sorry, this one's Versailles. I'm in my own shadow here. This one's Versailles. So this is a green. So I'm going to put that one right here. Honestly, I don't think you could do this wrong. This is just whatever makes you happy. This is my country gray. It's got a little more gray in it, but it's still a green. So it is very similar to Versailles, but not quite as bright. So I'm going to put that down here on the opposite. Give it a good squeeze. This one's a beautiful color. This is old violet. And it really is. It's an old color with a lot of blue in it. Very pretty. Put that down here so it's not underneath the other blue, the Obison that we used. And my last one is a fun color. This is Louis Blue. Bluey blue is a soft kind of baby blue. Smack in the middle there. There we go. So, if you don't like that, let's say you let it dry, and you go, ugh, what was I thinking? Sand it off a little bit, pure white paint over it, you'll probably have to do two coats, and start again. So I'm going to go along, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do one up here, do one down here. So I'll probably do three tiles over here. And as I finish painting on the rest of the kitchen, I'll go around and do that random effect. But what it's going to do is just going to give me a nice little bright burst of color that's all part of my kitchen. So the next time you come back, we are looking for an island. And that will kind of complete our kitchen picture. And when you see the kitchen next, it will be all done, freshly painted, and we will be thoroughly enjoying it. So next week, we're going to go back to the dining room. The dining room is definitely a process. We are working on the chairs, and we haven't yet started the table, but I'll show you all about that next week.